there's another wrinkle to OPA. There's a trust fund under OPA, which was one of the reasons it was passed of, I think it's over a billion dollars. The president actually uh, can, can, uh, can order the availability of about a billion dollars to compensate for losses that are recognized under OPA. Uh, and the general procedure is that claimants will make a claim against the responsible party, and if the responsible party doesn't pay, they can make a claim against the trust fund under OPA. Um, the statute is set up to discourage litigation. So if you bring a lawsuit before you make your claim, you can't bring your claim until your lawsuit is over. The idea being that the statute encourages the administrative uh, claim process versus litigation. I've read about a lot of lawsuits being brought by lawyers who may not know OPA very well and may be jumping the gun in terms of their ability to recover under the trust fund uh, versus being involved in a lawsuit which could take years. The Exxon litigation um, took 20 years and it's not over. There are still disputes. I've been involved in it so I know. Um, the oil spill was in 1989. The lawsuits were started in 1989. It is 2010 and the case is not over. And the actual uh, punitive damage award was only upheld, although it was reduced significantly last year, 19 years after the oil spill. So these claims could take a very, very long time in suit. And the whole purpose of OPA was to simplify the procedure and allow claimants faster compensation through the trust fund. So I question whether some of these plaintiffs' lawyers really know what they're doing by bringing these lawsuits so quickly without thinking it through. I'm not criticizing the decisions. I'm just wondering whether they've really thought it through very carefully because they may be um, uh, foreclosing the possibility of a claim process rather than having a big litigation that's going to go on for years and years. They also have the right to make claims against this trust fund. You make your claim against the responsible party. If the claim is not satisfied by the responsible party, you can then go against the fund or bring your lawsuit. If you bring your lawsuit, you can't make a claim against the fund until the lawsuit's resolved. And so that's why, um, again, I think people have to think through what they're doing before they jump, they, you know, they jump into a lawsuit that might take many, many years. But yes, you would have you would have the state and the federal government would be able to claim against this fund as well. What would happen is that the trust fund is subrogated. If the trust fund pays $100 to a claimant, it obtains the right of that claimant to go after the responsible party. So you would have, let's say the trust, let's say that the um, the trust fund ends up paying $750 million in claims or in cleanup costs, it would be subrogated to go after the responsible party, which looks like it's BP in this instance. So the increase in the, in the limit would probably enhance the chances of the fund getting more money back as, as subrogee of the claimants that they paid. But again, I'm, I'm troubled by the retroactive effect of this, given that I think an argument could be made that no one would have expected this to happen and therefore they didn't take appropriate measures to have proper insurance in place um, outside the scope of what they knew was the statutory scheme in place at the time. And I don't know how that's going to get resolved, but it's a little troubling.